Hi, my name is Urška and I'm the co-founder of Bellabit, a tech-driven wellness company that is known for designing beautiful products that help women track and understand their lifestyle and achieve their personal wellness goals. My co-founder Sandra and I uh, started a company in 2014 after going through Y Combinator program in San Francisco. Since then, we have raised several rounds of funding, had a product on the market since 2015, and hired teams and people across three continents. We are now a team of extremely curious, driven, and ambitious individuals. We're fairly successful at what we do, but what is most important to us is that we really love what we do. Bellabit has so far been recognized as one of the most innovative femtech companies on the market. Our products are used and worn by women across the globe. They have been noticed by tech experts, investors, and even celebrities. Obviously, a lot of things played an important role in that. But wha what we have most consciously invested in, what we have relied most on, and have been recognized more for, is the role of our design. Design of our products, our packaging, and even marketing. Because of this, and because design is something I'm most comfortable talking about, the topic of today's talk will be how design can play a decisive role in success and longevity of your company, or simply put, the health of your business. This situation, me standing in front of the cameras instead of you, the viewer, in person, is actually, I think, the perfect situation for me to try to get my point across. As I sat down to write today's talk, I realized how rusty I am, how I used to do these conferences and talks quite a lot, but then I focused on other things until eventually COVID hit. The pandemic has changed so many things. We have now gotten used to the situation a little bit, but remember how only a year ago we scrambled for solutions. The pandemic has changed the way we work, socialize, shop, and spend free time. Besides eating, sleeping, and pooping, those are actually the key elements of our daily lives. The main reason why we can say only a year away from basically a worldwide catastrophe that we are getting used to this new situation and that life pretty much goes on normally is technology. I bet that most of us couldn't even imagine what would have happened if this hit us 20 years ago. That time when only the cool kid had a computer at home and you had to dial in for the internet and keep everybody else away from the house phone. Life was a lot simpler and easier back then, maybe, but it would get extremely disrupted if we found ourselves in this situation unprepared like this. What I'm trying to say is that technology really saved our vulnerable human butts. But I think that pretty much everybody is aware of that. We're so grateful for all the screens that surround us our windows to the outside world that allow us to continue to work, see our loved ones, exercise, and continue with all of the things that we did previously. But what a lot of the people are probably not aware of is that all of this really cool technology would be pretty useless without a secret hero, the designer. What we're actually interacting with what is making all of this technology useful, convenient, and sometimes addictive, is the design of the products that use technology to achieve a certain purpose or function. I've learned about the power of design really early on in our startup journey. Sandra and I were 23 and 24 when we started Bellabit, but we embarked on a path that would later become Bellabit even earlier. 
I was studying fine arts, fine arts sculpture at the Finnish Academy of Fine Arts, and Sandra was studying to become a developer when we met. While back then, <laughs> the only smartphone app I was aware of was Facebook, and I was using my newly acquired laptop just to watch movies on DVD, I did own a chainsaw. I wasn't the cool new media, user experience, um, animation artist. I was a uh, plain the dirt artist. When I met, met Sandro, my co-founder, I didn't even know what a developer was. I just thought he was a geek. And by no means I knew what technology could do or how it was made. So obviously when he approached me with this idea to help him create and design a smartphone app, I said yes. Of course, it was way harder than I imagined. So I scrambled to catch up, had to learn all the tools from start, the Photoshop, Illustrator, basically I had to learn how to use my computer. But no matter how hard it was, I was really intrigued. What we were creating was called Baby Watch, a combination of a device and an app that allowed future moms to listen to their baby's heartbeat. While the topic of pregnancy was sometimes hard for me to get excited about at 22, I was super excited about designing this. Not just a product, but a company. Even though ours wasn't the only such product on the market, and our innovation in technology was quite subtle and maybe easy to copy at that time, we were getting really good traction and getting recognized in the world of tech startups. I wasn't fully aware of it back then, but my lack of enthusiasm for the topic itself, knowledge of technology or experience in business made me turn to the only thing that I could understand, and that was design. And because I was also the co-founder of the company and not a design student, student that a tech founder hired to make a couple of things a little prettier, design became an integral part of our innovation. As much as Sandra was basically left to his own devices on the tech side, we both recognized the power of innovation on the design side. Quickly, this has proven to be great recipe for success. We have able to achieve things that, company, that takes years for companies to achieve fairly quickly. We were selling before we had a solid business plan, just because our product had the right combination of new technology, new exciting technology, and pretty packaging. This was in 2013, at the end of 2013, when startup world was nearing its peak. 2014 was the heyday of startups. Startup founders were basically rock stars, and money was really easy to get. We saw this as a great opportunity for us to apply our approach to something even bigger. Because while tracking in pregnancy was a really small niche on the market, there was a close segment that was about to explode, the wearables. Devices that allowed everybody to track their lifestyle and fitness. But what we were seeing was all this really cool, exciting sensor technology being packaged in really ugly, not really, but extremely ugly apps and devices. We were appalled, but not surprised. Back then, most technology was developed by tech dudes. Tech dudes were creating technology for other tech dudes. They weren't designing products, they were developing features and were more concerned about what technology could do than how humans are going to use it. This we saw as a great opportunity for us. While we were not tech dudes and had way less resources than some of these companies that were already on the market, we did believe in the power of great design. We believed that we could use this wave of excitement, use the technology that was available to us, and take it to a, new, a whole new level 
through exciting human-centric design. And thus, Bellabit and our first product, the Leaf, was born. The Leaf was our first wellness tracker specifically designed for women. We called it a fitness tracker back then. The Leaf was also the first wearable designed as beautiful jewelry. We completely rethought how technology could be developed and produced at that time. We used natural wood for the housing, and we developed mechanical design that allowed the users to wear it in three different ways, as a bracelet, necklace, or a clip. Immediately after launch, the Leaf was recognized as one of the most innovative mobile products at CES 2015. It was wanted by many women across the globe, women who were previously put off by the cold, clunky, and plasticky technology. Technology that, on top of being unattractive, didn't do much for them, because most developers were back then men, and disregarded the differences between the male and the female bodies, health, and lifestyle. We sold our first batch immediately after opening our web shop, and before we even had a solid plan how to continue to produce it. The success of Leaf solidified the position of Bellabit on the world tech map and our belief in the power and importance of great design. Since then, we have worked hard to apply our design approach to every aspect of our business, from how our products are thought of, how they are designed, how they are produced, what kind of partners we choose to work with, to even how we sell them to the end consumer. Design has significantly influenced and improved our business model and has become an integral part that we so rely on in our everyday operations and plans for the future. I could go on and on about the importance of our design for Bellabit and our business. I could tell many anecdotes how design helped us improve our innovation and remain competitive on a market that eats successful companies for breakfast. But if there was one takeaway that I would point out to startups today, it would be to hire a great designer as soon as you can. And if I would give one, one advice to young designers, it would be to become great designers. Someone who studies the past, the present, and the future, and is able to distill an incredible amount of data, information, impressions, and emotions into a product, experience, or a process that helps startups accelerate and companies prosper. Thank you.